This is Gustav Leroux from Zion Company. You are listening to one of our spirit schools. Subscribe and enjoy. Tonight I want you to stay. Stay in the spirit with the Father. Stay in the realm that you're at right now. Father, we absolutely glorify and magnify your incredible name, Lord. To be able to walk with you in this manner. Father, we have changed our belief system that stated that we have to die to go to heaven. Maybe some are still just not quite there yet. Some might not really believe it with all their heart. Some might have experienced measures of it. Some might have gone in once or twice. Some might have really clicked it and have been living in this realm. But Father, I do pray that we'll begin to understand what you've opened up for us through the blood of Yeshua. Let's begin to understand what happened, Father, when you slayed the lamb. We understand your word says the lamb was slain before the foundations of the earth. That's why we have men and women in the Old Testament that it engaged you in a measure that wasn't really available, but yet through faith and intimacy and relationship Enoch pleased you Elijah was taken and caught up without having to die Moses spending 80 days face to face with you and then having the capacity to build a tent and live in there or stay or go in there and spend that face to face time with you and the 70 elders with him David being able to live out of time out of his time in another dimension saying things that should not be said at the time that he was in do not let your holy spirit part from me when the holy spirit wasn't even given yet we understand if you look at the lives of these men intimacy relationship worship so father we want to come before your throne and that's that realm that we want to step into that place where your word says worship me but when you do as a matter of fact, the only way that you can worship me is in spirit and in truth. Then let's go back to Hebrews 4.12 where we realize we have to divide soul and spirit. Why? Because my spirit needs to be free. The Father let us free the spirit man. Let us literally shift from being human beings to going in, uh, into the dimension that you've opened up for us so we can operate and live in this world right now, today, as spirit beings. With our spirit always shadowing our soul and our body. My spirit man, one with Christ, living in him, moving in him, having my entire being in him. By faith, I take my soul and my body in to the kingdom of heaven and live from out of that realm into creation to bring alignment to all things, to restore what you have given me, Father. Father, we love you praise you. We just want to absolutely glorify your name tonight. It's all about you, Yahweh. Thank you, my King. Amen. Someone in the back there for me to switch the light on. Thank you. Okay, how are you guys doing? Amen. Oh, Marvelous. <laughs> Marvelous. I like it. Okay, so I'm going to try and do tonight. I have done this before, yeah. Probably more than once, but I really, really felt, you know, I, I have so many notes. And Yahweh keeps on giving me more and more and more and more stuff to teach. But sometimes I feel that we need to just kind of step back a little bit so that you can engage the things that you've already forgotten about. You know, when I come in, I teach something that you've heard before because there's nuggets of what we've done. But there's so much that you haven't truly engaged. And I know that I, you haven't engaged because I can see that you haven't engaged it. Not that it's a problem that you don't engage it because you can really only be where you're at, right? You know, and Yahweh will always meet you where you're at. He can't meet you where you want to be. But He's not going to meet you there. He's going to meet you where you're at. So the reality is that we need to face the place that we're at at the moment that we're there. Because that's where he's going to come and open up a gateway for you to go into. 
Now, I've said this before, but I want to remind you that the Bible tells us that we, we are gates. We are doors. Let's lift up you, your heads, you gates, right? Talking about us, we are gates. A gateway for creation, a gateway for each other. Why? Because we are the body, we're not the bride. I know that's very exciting for most of us to hear um, because we so desperately want to be the bride of Christ. He never said that you are the bride, he said you are the body. He said you are like a bride. Right? Even when you listen to the, to the ketubah giving, uh, given to the Israelites, it is not a marriage, but it's like a marriage covenant. It's that covenant that we know. It's the only form of intimacy that we truly understand. Right? If you're married, you understand that you are deeply in love with one person. You want to spend your life with her. You know, me and my wife haven't been together for long, but we are, I believe we're young. She's 39, I'm 45. We've been together for 21 years. You know, for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a long time to be with someone and to find ourselves growing deeper in love every day uh, is incredible, right? But the understanding I have with this is that there has to be relationship. You have to re really honestly try to understand, to, to be movable, if that's something you can understand, right? You can't just be set in your ways and not change, right? You know, I, 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 me and my wife had this long conversation and it was very refreshing to me because I never ever want her to feel the way that she felt. You know, as a pastor's wife or a minister's wife, or even if it's the other way around, a pastor's husband or, a, you know, a minister's husband, you, you always feel that you're just the wife and you don't have your own identity. People don't look at you and say, oh, that's Claire LaRue. So they say that it's Gustav's wife. And I do not ever want my wife to live in my shadows. She is her own person. She is a phenomenal, powerful, incredible being. And so about, about two years ago, I said in my heart, I want you to go do what you want to do. And what she ended up doing was the weirdest thing. Like, she, she went and she worked on boats. So what she does, she, first she started off and all she did is she sanded the boats. Because they, her boss would respray the boats. So she started, re she started uh, sanding it. She would come home, she would be like neon white. But that's if the boat was white. Right? And then she's earning a, a good ish salary. She's working a half a day and she's enjoying it. She comes home, she's tired, you know. <laughs> and I, I was, I'm a little bit intimidated, you know. Because I'm sitting at home and I'm my nails, ooh, my nails are a little bit dirty. Let me clean myself, you know. Um, <laughs> don't want to be outside. Where's the air conditioning? You know, my wife's like, let's go sit outside. Are you insane? Are you out of your mind? You know, we have air conditioning in the house. Why on earth do you want to go sit outside? But it's so nice and warm out there. Yeah. Then she switched and she started doing painting. So well, not, not painting, but she would do uh, varnish. She started varnishing the wood. And there's a process that people really don't want to do. The idea of a really good varnisher, they call it a master varnisher. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, you, you have to be able to see your face in the wood that's varnished. That's a long process. And of course, they will use a very good quality paint because it's for a boat. So it's called all grip and it's expensive. And uh, it's really not many people that can do it. And it's also a very patient thing. I don't understand women are more patient than men. <laughs> okay, fine, okay, well, my wife's more patient than what I am but, but you know it's in different aspects of life in some ways I'm more patient than what she is and in some ways she's more patient than I do then eventually she said well I think I'm going to start my own business because the guy that she was working for they liked each other and they loved each other and they worked together he's a friend of ours we loved him but something needed to change for her then she started her own business and she started spray painting herself but in this process, somebody saw her work. Now, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't know if it's just in America, but if you're getting paid $20 an hour, and the job is a 50-hour job, you're going to make sure you are working the full 50 hours, which is a really bad idea if you want more work. So what she's noticed is the guys work like this. And she's uh, fast, you know, she does, gets it over with, does it done, 
He wants to get it out. So someone saw her work on another boat and thought, wow, that's incredible. Never seen anybody work like that. So he calls his friend that wants his boat sprayed. And eventually, long story short, she sprays this guy's boat. He eventually wants her to come and work for him. And she's enjoying it. Now she's meeting up with all these millionaires. Her boss is a multimillionaire. She went to California the other day and met up with billionaires. People that, that want, I mean, her boss calls her on a daily basis for, for ask her questions. She is his advisor. She, she's doing almost everything for him. He pays her a phenomenal salary for what she does. And of course, but she's spray painting his boat. She's cleaning his houses. She's giving him you know, all the stuff. It's just amazing. But I had to, in my heart, say, well, go do what you need to do. She never wanted to be in ministry, and I never wanted her to be in ministry, but she can preach the living daylights out of anything. Matter of fact, she's an extremely powerful being, but, but I've noticed her power, her true power is released when she's one-on-one. -on -one. When she goes and she speaks to somebody, or she's got the ability to, to share one word with somebody, and it just changes his life or her life. And of course, and she, she's what you call, she didn't fall on her mouth. That's not an English saying, it's an Afrikaans saying. In Afrikaans you say, say me about back for fall me. It means she didn't fall on her mouth, but what it really means is that she will say what needs to be said. Yes. So if you come in and you look like an idiot, she's the one that's going to say, excuse me. <laughs> you look like an idiot. <laughs> and I'm like, oh God. <laughs> I said all of that because Yahweh really wants us to begin to understand that we cannot be conformed by others. You cannot look like they want you to look. Right. You can't be what they want you to be. Yes. You know, his desire is truly for you to begin to rise up and see that he has called you to a specific thing in life. And what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to go back to Psalm 23. And I want you to see the ability that we have as spirit beings to engage in the word. For the gate is a porthole. The gate is a doorway. The, 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 the word is a doorway. But when I say the word, I'm not just talking about the Bible. Like I've said this a million times in my meetings because we believed in our subconscious and of course we've been trained to believe this, that the Bible is the only word of God. And of course if you live around here, there's only one translation. <laughs> and if you dare have another translation, you're from Satan. As a matter of fact, you are deceived. Now the reality of all of that what I just said is it's not true. Right? The true translation is the interlinear Bible. And that is a translation, but it gives you the direct translation from the original. Which that doesn't even actually make any sense. Which one? I didn't hear. Uh, in the linear Bible. Okay. But the idea behind all of this is that Yahweh says that there is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. He talks about it being Logos, Rhema, and of course the living. We understand the Logos is that which is written down, which we would say is the Word of God, that, the Bible. We have that which is spoken which is what is in the air and the atmosphere, things we cannot see, things we cannot touch, things that you cannot access unless you engage your spirit man. We go back into the Hebraic letters, the Aleph and the Taf, we engage with them and we begin to understand, even in the Hebrew culture, they are known to not just be normal letters. But they are living beings, fiery gates. Right? And we get to go into them and it's a spirit. In the, in the natural, you cannot do it. You know, that's why even the Hebrew culture is very limited to their knowledge because there's a book after a book after a book that you can study in these letters and it's revealed. Some of these books can give you 20 pages on one letter. Yeah. Right. But when you step into the spirit as a spirit being and you engage with the actual letter, the living being, it changes your life. When Yahweh wants us to begin to understand the dimensions of the word, he wants us to understand that he has created it and pr pr uh, given it to us so we can go into it. Same with the living word. The living word is Yeshua. Yes. Now slowly but surely we're beginning to understand that through the name uh, we step into the yard, into the hay, into the shin. And of course we also begin to understand that the shin has two dimensions to it. Yes, right. right? We've got the shin and we've got the shin kado. The, the shin kado is the four prong shin and the shin is just the three prong. But the one, they, what they both do is they, 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 they literally transform its fire and teeth that's what it represents and we go into the hay into the valve or into the valve into the hay to step into that name is to have the power that it carries 
to step into Yeshua's to understand what it means because it's in him that you learn to move and have your being and it's from there that he begins to give you revelation and you begin to understand that which was spoken throughout the earth I can now engage but you have to understand something and I'm sure you guys know this because this is theological uh, facts the Gospels which is uh, was it John Matthew, Mark, and John. Luke is there as well. They are pretty much the same, right? Pretty much. Uh, Yeshua's ministry was only really for three years. Um, we understand that he was a rabbi. He wasn't just a weird guy that walked in the street one day and said, Hey, you follow me. Yeah, sure, dude, I'll follow you. No, he was a rabbi. Right? We understand. That's why he only merges at the age of 30. Because that's the time where a rabbi can truly begin to... To rabbi, <laughs> right? And of course, he was a rabbi with authority. Uh, that changes everything. We understand all of this stuff. It's, it's just the, the logic fact. So a rabbi with authority can teach his own yoke. We understand that the yoke was that which the rabbi would teach. But uh, one, a rabbi that's not one with authority can only teach the yoke that he was taught. So Yeshua could teach out of a whole other place. Yeah. We understand that Yahweh's desire for us is to begin to step into him to see that living dimension of who he truly was for us to begin to gain the knowledge that's in him now understand something in yeshua i have the fullness of life the zoe life it's in yeshua that i'm seated there in that place where he desires for me to govern so when i begin to engage the fullness of the word that is the the written the living and the spoken there's a gateway of establishment and governance that opens up for me yes. <laughs> and of course this gateway wants to open up for the church yes. but the church is still limited to one portion how many of you understand if you have one portion of the truth it's not the truth right. Right. it's a measure of the truth yes. and I always use a very stupid example but <laughs> you know you can join <laughs> Planet Fitness for ten dollars a month ten dollars who joins the gym for ten dollars a month you're the ones who don't want to go. That's, of course, don't forget, don't, don't forget, there's Pizza Mondays. There you go, Pizza Mondays. And also, what's that bread with a hole in the middle? Not donut. You've got Bagel Thursdays. I mean, that's pretty cool. But for $10, you can, you can go to this gym. You can engage in everything that's there. But, but that's only half of the truth. Because for $20, you can then access every single club in the United States. You can use the tan bed, you can use the massage beds, you get 50% discount on everything you buy in the shop, and you get a 20% discount when you go buy something at Reebok. Oh, no. That's pretty much a deal. Yeah. Then if you're really lazy and you want to train there like me. <laughs> but that's the difference between what we have here. We have a measure of the truth, and it's great. It sounds good. For the last 2,000 years, this was doing really great. I know the Bible's not that old, but it was doing good. But now Yahweh has opened up another dimension for us. As a matter of fact, two other new dimensions has opened, not because it was never available. It's always been available, but we started engaging it by faith. Yeah. Now we're getting new revelation. Doorways and gateways are opening, and we're beginning to understand things that we have never understood before. Yahweh is revealing and releasing to the body of Christ mysteries and secrets that we never thought we would be able to engage at this point. As a matter of fact, the body of Christ is doing things today that we never thought would be possible. As a matter of fact, 90% of the things that really is happening uh, that's hidden... Uh, it's hidden because, first of all, the church, as it is today, in its old age, will freak out. <laughs> but um, the stuff that's happening right now is, is changing the face of the earth. It's unseen. And it's Yahweh's desire for us to begin to understand the value of who you are as a spirit being. To start walking in what He's called you to, and to just step into the full measure of what's being released. So when you engage the Word... And I say, when I engage the word, I'm not talking about the Bible. Like I'm talking about all three in one, engaging it in its full measure. You are a son. You are a daughter. You are seated in Christ. You constantly in the Spirit. You're worshiping. You magnify. You glorify this incredible God. You live in all of who He is, right? It's not just a religious act. It's not just something I do on a Sunday or a Wednesday. It's not just something I do because it sounds like a good idea. Because I want my fire insurance. But I want a little bit more than my fire insurance, right? I want to understand who Yeshua truly is. Yes. Why is he this awesome, incredible, phenomenal God that wants to bless me, that wants to enhance me? Mm. I want to engage him. I want to know him. I don't want to be religious about it. Right. You know, he says things that blows us out of the, mind, out of our, out of the water. He says things like, to the pure, all things are pure. 
How pure do you have to be for adultery, adultery to be pure? No wow. matter that, how pure do you have to be for pornography to be pure? We understand this in our natural capacity. None of that stuff's ever going to be pure. None of that stuff's ever going to be what he's talking about because he says that I will purify you. I will take the, that record of the DNA that you were birthed into out of you. You understand something? Yeshua at his baptism walks for about three years, maybe a little bit less, and then we have the Mount of Transfiguration. There's a time period in there, and it started off with the baptism and the voice of the Father say, this is my son who I'm well pleased. That's the beginning of his walk with the seven spirits. Because you understand that the seven spirits has seven colors. And it's the seven colors of the rainbow. Right? These seven colors in its pure form, when it is uh, taken around at 2,800 revs per minute, it turns into white light or turns into a white thing. You know, if any of those colors in its pure form is off, it will turn darker and eventually go black. So engaging with the seven spirits up to the point of the man of transfiguration, there is a complete change because at that point, he, when he appeared with Moses and Elijah, his DNA changed and literally it seared away from his mother. That's the desire for the Father, of the Father for us. Once that took place, the dimension and the purity of who he is to reflect in creation, began to enhance everything he did. Yeah. And Yahweh is calling a company of people that will understand what that means. Because once my DNA is completely aligned and pure, when, when I begin to understand that I'm no longer connected to my mother and my father, which I loved and honor very much, but I am burst into creation through them and into sin. Not because of them, because of Adam and Eve, or because of the, that which we already understand happened many, many years ago. But I get re completely renewed and re 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 reconformed through the engagement of the fullness of who Yeshua is and what he has given me to engage in the heavens. So that I can become that dimension of pure light. Once I step into that place, <coughs> sin no longer has record in my DNA. Now you have to understand something. The church has told us that sin is what you do. The sin is what you are. If I am no longer in that place, then I can no longer sin. I know what you're thinking. Well, that's not true, brother. Trust me. That's not true. I am proof of that. But it's because we have a do-do mentality. If you do that, it's sin. Why? Because the church has been eating of the tree of good and evil. Right and wrong. Yes and no. Yeshua doesn't eat of that tree. And his people are not made to eat of that tree. We are supposed to go beyond the veil and eat of the tree of life. To engage that full measure of eternity and engage in all of what he's opened up for us. It's his desire for us to do this, right? God's desire is to reveal uh, to us the reality of who he truly is in scripture. His desire for us is to truly engage as the word opens up for us as spirit beings, to go into it, to build on a relationship that is deeper than what we perceive in the natural. You know, if I look at my wife, uh, which I love and honor very much, I would think that I know her after 21 years. But the sacrifices she has made, I now begin to understand. I don't really know her because I don't know who she truly wants to be. So that's a whole nother doorway that's opened up for us in our marriage that we can now begin to engage together. Because I remember a prophecy that came to her it said that your job will be the key to your husband's ministry. Now she's never had a job, so we never even engaged that until recently she started something and what, what, where she's at right now. And then all of a sudden we began to realize that Yahweh truly wants to bless what she's busy doing. That's exactly the same thing Yahweh wants to do. He wants to take you to a place in relationship where you find new dimensions of who Yahweh is to you and who you are to Him. He wants to open up that gateway. I want to take a look at a couple of verses or phrases out of Psalm 23. It's a very powerful psalm which talks about uh, the intimate relationship that God desires to have with us. And I'm just going to start very simply, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. But I'm going to stop there for a second and go to just the Lord. Now you have to understand, 
to, to even just call him the Lord of your life, there's a phase that you have to go through right. <coughs> in submission to him that has to change your life completely. I can get saved, hallelujah, and I could die and I can go to heaven, or I could get saved, hallelujah, and not die. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now I have a process to go through, and this ain't going to be easy, right? But for me to truly get locked and sealed into what he's opened up for me, I have to make him Lord. That's his desire. So just looking at the word Lord is a term that God has chosen to use to describe his character and nature. There are several names that helps us grasp different aspects of that character and nature. See, I always desire for you to know him. Not, and, and, I, and I want you to understand something. 90%, I'd say 90% is not an actual statistic. Might be less, might be more, might, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> say, say 80% of what's in the word is a very small measure of what he truly is trying to present to you. And of course, it comes out of a timeline that we don't perceive or understand. It comes out of a culture that we no longer have. Yeah. Things in those days were allowed that's no longer allowed. Right. I mean, how is it lawful to chop up your daughter in 12 pieces and send it to 12 different states or nations? Mm. Never mind that. Let's make a baby with our slaves. Huh? Oh, excuse me? <laughs> what? Let's just take another wife. <laughs> Matter of fact, our president, our ex-president, thank you, Jesus. Um, Zuma. I was South African, if you didn't know that. He had ten wives. Oh my but now you can only have one lawful wife, right. but you can have traditional wives. Oh. So he has nine traditional wives and one actual wife. And she manages the household. <laughs> she governs the other wives. Now, first of all, I want to say shame on any woman that allows that. <laughs> but in the same breath, if we understand it, I'm, and this, is, this has got nothing to do with anything, and I'm not trying to say anything about it. The word never says, the original doesn't say that you have to have one wife. The original actually says you have to have at least one wife. So it's not an evil sin, but the combination of two women deciding that it's okay to share one man just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it's, it's, just, it's just craziness. I have no idea what I'm talking about right now. Mormonism. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I'm talking about. <laughs> you tried that, your wife would bring home some varnish. Well, I've got shotguns, so I'm not going to try that. I ain't going to try that. <laughs> now, you know, if we had to look at the names of Yahweh, we could probably take forever, because his names are so in-depth. But I'm going to take seven names... Um, in this specific category, Lord, and just kind of go through it. But, but I want you to see it beyond the veil. And see what it does for you when you step and stand before Him. Not on this side of the veil. This side of the veil is, 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 a, is a baby side of your faith. Because on this side, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Right. And the measure that comes is not in His fullness. Yeah, with that measure you can move a mountain, but His desire for you is to step in beyond the veil and meet faith. And operate out of his faith and go from there into dimensions of faith. And it changes everything because there's so much more. It's going from one plus one to algebra. Well, I would go into some scientific equation that I can't even give you an example of. Bring it up, brother. I can't do it. I just can't do it. The Lord is my righteousness. Now, there's a Hebraic name for that, but most of the time I can't pronounce it, so I'm not even going to go there. The Lord, <laughs> the Lord, my righteousness. I like, I like the idea of him being Lord of righteousness because he gives it to me as a gift, right? But I have to have the revelation of righteousness to truly walk in it. Because Satan has the capacity to know your level of revelation on righteousness. If you don't know righteousness, he will bring condemnation. That's the way he does it. This, this, this is the right standing with God. Or the right to stand in His presence. You have to understand something. Without the blood of Yeshua, you cannot even be in His midst. But now what Yahweh has done, now the church didn't teach us this. 
No, I love and honor the church, and I'm part of the church. We are the church. I'm not part of a building. We are the church, right? right. But the church taught us that I have to, to, I can never see him. And if I go to see him, I'm going to die first. Can't go to heaven unless I die. Can't be perfect unless I die. Why? Because we're eating of the wrong tree. But if I eat of the right tree, I can be perfect tomorrow. Because what Yahweh thinks to be sin is not what we think to be sin. You know, the word sin means to miss the mark. It's what you're doing, keeping you from doing what Yahweh has called you to do. Let me tell you something. 90% of the church is doing stuff that they think is great. And it includes phenomenal signs and wonders and miracles. But it's not what's written on their scroll. They're doing what Yahweh, what others are telling them to do. And they've made a ministry out of it. That's called works of iniquity. There's no reward for what you're doing outside of what's written on your scroll. Because everything you do outside of what's written on your scroll, you did not agree to. You only get rewarded for what you agree to on your scroll. That's why it is an extreme importance for you to go and get your scroll. I've got many teachings on this. Know your righteousness. Understand the power that comes with it. Because of that gift, I can stand before Him. So go stand before Him. No, 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 don't, don't scaffold on this side. Go in. Yes. But I don't know how to go in. Well, I can't teach that tonight. I've taught that a thousand times already. We've got a thousand messages on YouTube. Go listen to some of them. We've got my mentors, Ian Clayton, Grant Mahoney and his wife, Samantha. These are people you could engage on, on, on their websites. Right? Engage with them. Uh, buy their messages. Listen to it. There's this revelation that you need right now that is going to propel you to a deeper place. Yes, now, as you read the scripture, uh, I want you to understand it is a porthole. Now, I'm saying one scripture. We've got thousands of scriptures in the Bible, right? right? And every single one of them is some form in some way or fashion, a gateway, a doorway for you to go in. Right. I talk about my Lord. <coughs> the Lord, my sanctification. That is the process of transformation and change that God wants you to take, uh, or that He wants to take us through. That has to do with the shin. Stepping into that dimension where you are transformed into what you're supposed to be. That, that fire that burns and that literally shifts you from where you are now to where you should be. It's that deep place. You guys okay? Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> the Lord is there. I think that's called Shema. He wants us to, I know that, I only know that because one of my friends used to, he had a dog called Rocky, and this dog was a fighter. He wanted to bite everybody and be vicious and just attack anything that moves. So the next dog he got, he called something else. Because he thought, well, you know, whatever you call your dog, he's going to become. So he called his dog Shema. And it means the Lord is there. You know, and it was a very peaceful, very pleasant dog really to have. Good. That's funny. Yeah. But he wants us to be conscious, conscious of his very presence with us all the time. Literally, uh, Yahweh the Father, Yahweh the Son, Yahweh the Holy Spirit in you, over you, engaging you as you engage with them. But even more, it's just stepping into that place, allowing him to overshadow you consistently. The Lord, my peace, shalom. It's, his peace is far more than being just relaxed or chilled out. His peace is wholeness and absolute perfect rest. Yes. Everything we need is complete in Him. It is the declaration in the midst of war that literally stops everything going on dead in its tracks and instantly bring peace and rest. Of course, we have the capacity in us as sons Walking in creation to literally, wherever you put your feet, bring shalom. Amen. Change the atmosphere. Realign it. Yeah. Bring it to what you want it to be. Amen. That's why you are already conformed to the heart of Yahweh by the time you're a son in creation. Because your will is His will. Your desires is His desires. That it's not like, oh, I must make time to worship. No, I worship. I must make time to pray. Now I pray. You know, me and my wife... Because we have four kids, we have to make uh, time to spend together on purpose. And sometimes you have to make time to spend with Yahweh on purpose. Amen. And if you're a busy person, you work hard, make that time to spend with Him. And you don't need much time. Because there's no time and space in the kingdom of heaven. But you need to press in, right? 
I say you need to press it, not because it's some lawful, legalistic, religious thing you have to do. It's because Yahweh desires for you to become what He's called you to be. Creation is calling out to sons. And that is not just children of God. It relates to mature ones. It says, I need a company of people that will come in and realign creation. That will bring in restoration to all things. My blood restored you, now I restore creation, that which belongs to you. Are you guys okay? Yeah. The Lord is my healer. <clears throat> Yahweh wants us to come to Him and find perfect health in body, soul, and spirit. You know, that's something we don't understand. Uh, Yahweh, understand this. Yahweh doesn't want to heal you. He doesn't want you to come to Him so He can heal you. He doesn't want you to pray and ask, Father, come heal me. He says to His disciples, go heal the sick in my name. So he's given you the ability, he's given you the capacity. You know, we are at the point in our faith where we pray for the sick to be healed. But Yahweh is wanting us to restore creation so that there's no sickness, so that there's no disease. <laughs> well, brother, that's not going to happen. That will only happen when Jesus returns. Jesus returns in you. Now he will physically return. But for right now, he returns in you. Because you are a son. And you are dressed and clothed in Him. You are the body of Christ. He is the head. Exciting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the Lord is my provider. Yeah. We no longer need to struggle, right? Now, I'm not a prosperity teacher, but you see, according to your position in Christ as a son, as a daughter, He will supply your needs. Yeah. But it's not just about the needs, because in your position, He will supply what's needed for where you're going and what you're doing. Now, I came to America with $1,500 and a family of six. Well, all together with six. Sold everything I owned, had nothing when we got here. Just $1,500. I don't know, what, what can you buy with $1,500? And what happened, $1,500 in South Africa at this point is $100. Almost 300,000 rand. No, 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 no. 30, almost 30,000 rand. Because it's 19 rand to the dollar. So 30,000 rand, it's a, it's a lot of money. But it's what I got for everything I owed before I moved here. Of course, you yeah, sell second hand stuff, you're not going to get anything for it, right? A sell a car that you still owe money on, you've got, oh, this is a $40,000 car. I'm only getting like a dollar for it anyway, after I sold it. But it's a decision you have to make. It's, it's your commitment to what Yahweh wants to yeah. propel you into, right? As I step into my position, remind yourself, I had to change my ministry when I came to America. Because Yahweh showed me my scroll. Mm. Now what I used to do, I'd come into a meeting and I would preach a message, a blah, blah, nice message, and then I would start prophesying over everybody. Mm. That was my office. That's what they, they, they placed me in, really. My office was more apostolic. But because I had the ability to prophesy at any given time, uh, very accurately, deep, crazy things, that's what I did, that's what people liked. And so that's what I thought I'd be doing. But when Yahweh showed me my scroll, none of that was on it. Matter of fact, the teachings and the meetings that I have is completely different. There's no laying on of hands. It's not a church meeting. I come in and what I do is I open a gate for you in the spirit to come in. Your responsibility is to come into my gate and see what Yahweh has for you. What I'm teaching is for creation. What I'm teaching is for this, the, the, the realm that we're in right now. It's for, the, for, the, for the, uh, the, the nation or the state or the city that we're in. But you enter into my gate to find out what Yahweh wants to show and reveal to you. Right? What I teach is uh, really a revelation from out of the heart of Yahweh so that you can begin to walk in what He has for you. Yes. That's why we trade. We don't take up an offering. We don't... Give because it's a good idea. I want to just bless you, brother. No, don't bless me. It's trade into the message. Yes. Trade into the revelation so you can have a greater understanding of what's being taught. Right. Yahweh wants to bless us. He wants to put you in a position where He can begin to pour into you. And I look at myself and my wife. Uh, ever since she started um, working or operating out of who she's meant to be, everything changes. Now, now some, some wives can be an incredible pastor's wife, 
an incredible minister's wife, right? It's just they've got the capacity to just do phenomenal things because it's part of a call. But my wife just wasn't called to that. No matter the fact that she's great at teaching, she's phenomenal at revelation, she walks in all the stuff I'm teaching um, even more and better than what I am. You know, she's an incredible being, but now that she's in the position that she's meant to be in, everything changes for us because we are both in position that Yahweh has called us to and He's beginning to pour into us. You guys excited? You look so excited. <laughs> it sounds like so. Thank you. How? Oh, I was saying it last night. It just looks like a rabbit. A rabbit that's got the light shining in his eyes. Say like, hello. A deer. I shall slap you. You guys okay? Yeah. Yes. Of course, his desire for us to not struggle. He wants to have us blessed. You know, your father is God. That should mean something. That should change something in your life. And of course, it's a process of growth because we have to believe this stuff. Everything doesn't just happen. You give your life to Jesus, ta-da, you've got a million dollars in your bank and everything just starts growing from there. It's a process because you have to believe. You have to grow into your position, right? If you don't know your position, you're just going to grow into something else. But when you start stepping in your position, everything changes for you. That's, of course, his desire. He wants us to look to him for love. To know what it means to be accepted yes. and not rejected. Yes. His desire in this is for you to step into the world and begin to see what is written. To go into the gate now, I know we don't understand it right now, but you're going to listen to this message again and again, and you'll begin to understand that every time you step in to what Yahweh has opened up. Now, in the old age, you don't understand something, you ask the pastor. Right. And he says, I no, that's from the devil, brother. <laughs> or he says, well, yeah, that sounds good, but he doesn't have an interpretation. Or he has an interpretation and gives you the interpretation, right? And it sounds good, either it's good or it's bad. But now we understand that the, the pastor does not always have the ability to know what you're doing or where you're at. As a matter of fact, I cannot interpret your encounter for you. It's not my function. As a matter of fact, an encounter uh, in this age that we're in does not need an interpretation. As a matter of fact, if you give it an interpretation, it will literally shatter it. Same with a dream. You do not need a dream interpreter in this age. Now, if you're still in the previous age, that's fine. You go there and you do whatever you need to do. But in this side, you are probably having a night watch experience and you need to have Yahweh express and explain to you what you engage. And you can go back into it because you're outside of time and space. In the process of going back in, Yahweh will begin to unfold for you the revelation and what's in it. And you have to by faith trust because you're in Him. And I remind yourself, He's the truth. When you're in the truth, the truth is revealed. We do this by faith. We say, well, you know, everyone can get deceived. You might not be in the truth. Well, you might not be in the truth. <laughs> and I say that not to be arrogant, but I, 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 I'm in him. It's not a joke. I'm not trying to be funny. You know, it's, it's been a long time for me to press into my God. You know, I've read scripture that I had... Um, men of God preach on that doesn't make any sense to me because it doesn't relate to the character of my God. Right. It's man's perception on man's perception. Yeah. And when I engage the Father's heart in that scripture, everything changes. Yeah. Because Yahweh shows us a different angle. Mm -hmm. He opens up a dimension to us that's more than just that which is written because that which is written comes out of a, a perception that a man had. But I engage behind that into the heart of Yahweh through the living Hebraic letters and dimensions of revelation open up for me. He says this, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. <clears throat> I love this scripture. It's Yahweh's desire to be in you. But it's Yahweh's desire for you to be in Him. Yeah. It's not a one-way uh, thing. You have to be in Him as He is in you. Yeah. Now the church up to this point only understands Him in us. That's why everything we do, everything we ask, everything we sing, everything we praise, come, yeah. 
Come to us. <coughs> you know, I love Enoch's book. I love the life of Enoch because he represents something different than what we perceive. Instead of staying on this side of the veil, he went in. Not accidentally, on purpose, because that's what he wanted. <coughs> you know, Mary says to the people, do whatever this man tells you to do. Mm -hmm. right. Jesus says to her, it's not my time, woman. She says, fill the water pots. <laughs> yeah. Five minutes later, he's doing everything that she told him to do. Why? Because her face can change his mind. Right. And it's not that his mind was set on not doing it. He was waiting for somebody that wants it as desperately as what is available. How hungry are you truly? How deep do you really want to go? If the word is there for you to go into, why do you just want to read it? <laughs> and I know we don't understand this yet. I mean, I've done it so many times and I've enjoyed it so much. And I know that some of you have done it. But when you read something in the word and as a spirit, you understand there's no limitations to what you can do. That's why the Bible tells us... <clears throat> In Christ, so through Christ, all things are possible. Yes. Right. You know, it sounds like such a powerful word. It's so wow. It's so yes. But I don't even understand. In all of who I am, that's not true. Because I cannot do a triple back somersault with a twist. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a lie. Then the Bible is lying. I can't do it. No matter what, I can have all the faith in the world. I shall break of my neck. No, you have not. <laughs> not you, <Liz. laughs> But what it's really talking about is what my spirit is not limited to the natural realm. Right. Why? Well, because it's my primary being. It's not the only being because I have to have all three to be whole. <laughs> right? And it's, uh, it's all three that brings the full inheritance that's promised. But my spirit has to be in charge overshadowing my soul and my body. So if my spirit is divided from my soul and my soul is divided from my body, my, my spirit man has the capacity to go in wherever there's a gate. Oh, that's, that's, that, that's, that, 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 that's not from God. Well, see, Yeshua did it all the time. But we can't read that in our Greek perception and understand it. Because he says to his disciples, I'm going to go up in the mountain and pray. There was no mountain close by. Not a mountain you can walk to at night and then come back before the next morning. We begin to understand. They knew exactly what he was talking about because of the culture. He went into the mountain of the Lord and engaged with his father. You know, when he says to his disciples, come pray with me. And then he comes back to them and he says, why are you sleeping? We all think, oh my God, these guys are so pathetic. You know, Yahweh goes up and he goes, for an hour and they fall asleep. And he's just praying to his father, I love you, daddy. You're such a wonderful, wonderful God. And they fall asleep. What were they doing? No, no, no. See, Yeshua was also sleeping. They were all sleeping. But he went in. They did not. He went into the mountain. It's called the night watch. That's why the Bible says the night's the new day. Because it's the night that begins your day. When you wake up, you wake up refreshed, full of the glory and the spirit and the fire of Yahweh. That which you've already achieved and done and the mantles and the mandate that was given to you in the kingdom of heaven while you were sleeping for the next day so you can do what needs to be done. When he steps into his father's house in his sleep time, he looks around and his disciples are not there. He's like, Dad, sorry. Just give me a second. I'll be back just now. That's why he says to, to Joshua, meditate on my words day and night. Well, how do you do that? How do you meditate on the word of God when you're sleeping? That way. <laughs> See, it's desire for us to begin to understand the power that we carry in what he's released to us. That I'm a spirit being, I have no limitations. I take the word of God, I open up and turn, and turn a page. I can literally go into it. That's why we have to activate our imaginations. Yes. And, and, and scientists have even proven that your brain has an eye that's not been activated. New Age has called it the third eye. They have to call it something because they don't have spirits. 
Now let him travel in the spirit. You can't travel in the spirit if your spirit's not born from above. But you can travel through your soul into an atmosphere. Now you have to understand, it is extremely powerful. And if you know Albert, I Albert Einstein's testimony, a lot of his discoveries took place when he went, and he was a born-again spiritual Christian, rejected by the church, because he would go into the spirit, and he would engage with his spirit into the atmosphere, come back with revelation that blew them out of the water. Yes. And the church rejected it. As a matter of fact, when I just started walking in these revelations, by the time I get to heaven, there was a room, and the room was full of revelation. I said to the angel that was standing guard over, and I said, why is this room so full of revelation? He said, because we keep sending it back, but everybody rejects it and it comes back up. Oh now, there's hardly anything in that room, because people are beginning to accept this. They are beginning to believe this. I mean, like Ian Clayton says, 20 years ago, he preached on the seven spirits, and he was basically stoned by the church. They didn't hand him a, 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 a J, marijuana leaves. Okay, they wanted to kill him. Because how dare you say that there's more spirits than the Holy Spirit. But now we're beginning to understand everybody teaches this because the Bible tells us there's seven spirits. They're not on the throne. Holy Spirit's on the throne. The seven spirits are at the throne. So if there's seven spirits at the throne, Holy Spirit's on the throne, then there's seven beings that I need to engage. One of them are called Wisdom. One is called counsel, one is called might, one is called uh, um, knowledge, the fear of the Lord, one is called understanding. Who doesn't want understanding? Who doesn't want to walk with wisdom? Now, if it's beings that I can engage with and they only teach me more about Yahweh, they don't take any glory, they only propel me to a deeper relationship with Him, then let me tell you something. I want it. <laughs> but I, I can't do it in the natural, I can't do it with my natural capacity. I have to engage what my soul needs to ignite with so that my spirit can begin to reflect the inward, uh, that's what the imagination means, in, in, inward uh, image activation, inward sight. Yes, yes. It is the enlightenment of my understanding that uh, comes out of Ephesians. Now I begin to understand the Father begins to show me through my spirit what my spirit man is doing. And that brings revelation to my soul. It brings a revelation to my body and it changes my DNA. That consistency. Yeah. It carries on. It says that he makes me lie down in green pastures. He invites us into that relationship every single day. He is crying out to us, wooing us, desiring so much more for us. There is so much more of him that we can experience and know as we open the door in our hearts. He opens up the door in heaven. He allows us to come in. He teaches us and shows us uh, there is so much greater intimacy in the kingdom of heaven. What I have with him on this side of the veil is done in faith. I love you, Jesus, but I never touched him, felt him. I never know if he's really there. I pray and I don't know if he's truly going to answer. When he does, yay. If he doesn't, I'm like, hmm, do you really love me? You, know, you say he'll do all this stuff, but you don't do anything. You know, to supply my need. I'm in need and it's not being supplied. I no longer have a house. Because I couldn't pay my rent. You said you'll supply my need. This is not supplying my need. Right? But once you step beyond the veil, there's a whole other game that opens up for you. Because now you're looking at him face to face. And all he has for you is love. All he has is excitement. Matter of fact, when you step in, entire heaven stops. And everybody looks and screams, A son! A son! A son has come in! Especially if it's your first time. And then immediately you're taken and you're trained and equipped because there's so much you need to know. There's so much that needs to be taught. Because the little bit that we get on this side of the veil is not enough. Can't feed you. Can't give you what you need. There's so much greater intimacy in this realm. He says, come up here. But you understand we don't actually go up. It's a shift. But the kingdom of heaven is at hand. His invitation is to us all. Come up to the holy place, to the throne room, the tabernacle, the garden, the river of life, to the waterfalls. Come and meet the seven spirits of God, of Yahweh. This is what God is coming, is doing in our day, inviting us to come. He wants our hearts and He wants, and He won't uh, relent until He gets them. He's doing everything in His power to get the ecclesia to receive. 
Because since we are, we are bound to the law first mention. Now there's a different aspect on the law first mention, but what I'm talking about right now, whatever you heard first, after you got born from above, is what binds you to what Yahweh wants to break you free from. So if I'm teaching you something, and law first mention in you teaches you something else, you're immediately going to reject what I'm saying. Because it binds you to that truth, and it might not even be a full truth. It might be a measure of the truth, and I've got the other side of it. <coughs> you guys okay? Yes. <clears throat> we need to surrender completely, wholly to Him. But the one who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with Him. I love that because this is an amazing promise. This is something He desires for us to understand. You know, if, if I decide in my heart to connect myself completely and utterly to Him, I become one with Him. You know, this is a logic thing, but I give myself to Him. I give my life over to Him. It's no longer my life, but it's His life. You know, that means that I literally shift into Him and I become the body and He is the head. It changes everything. <laughs> Are you guys okay? Yes. He's inviting us to flow together with Him, to be one spirit with Him. When we flow together, His voice becomes our voice as He speaks through us. And we, can join, uh, and we can join ourselves with Him every day. Where I am, there my servants will be also. <coughs> In the same breath, remind yourself that you're not His servant. That's right. mm -hmm. You're His son. You only feel like a servant. Why? Because of what you were taught. I serve you. I do everything and everything you tell me to do. But Yahweh's heart's desire is to come and get you to a point where you don't have to do everything He tells you to do. Where you will do everything that needs to be done because what's inside of you. Because His will and His word is in you. His will and His ways is set in your, in your being. And everything you do is perfect to what He has called you to. That's what He says, a mature son. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may also be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I <love> that. <sighs> See, I'm the Father. I'm in the Father and He is in me. Right. We can do nothing apart from Him. Mm -hmm. The works that I do, He will also do. And greater works than these, He will do. Because I go to the Father. Because I love and move and I have my being in Him. And I hope this stuff makes sense, guys. I want you to put your own name in that scripture. Mm -hmm. You will do greater works than what Yeshua done because the Father is abiding in you and does the works. I have to know the Father's heart. I have to know what the Father is propelling me into and just move with it. But I'm not talking about physical things. But there will be some physical things. Mm -hmm. Yahweh says, I need you to go into the city and I need you to do something. What I'm doing in the city might not be a physical thing. As a matter of fact, I might be sitting on my couch in my lounge, in my house, and I would be going into the city from there as a spirit and do certain things, engaging with certain angelic beings and aligning certain things, finding myself coming against dragons and giants and kings, finding myself standing before uh, other beings like mine, sons of light, and we work together to align certain things. Because that's the function of the sons, bring creation back to its full force. <laughs> after a little while the world will no longer see me but you will see me because I live and you will also you live also in that day you will know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you I love that and it's just mind blowing understanding that shift to go deeper and deeper into him but to understand the alignment that comes with you becoming one with him as you step in the